Next up, Ben Chun. All right. I teach computer science at a public high school here in San Francisco, and I consider that a license to teach my students pretty much any subject that I feel like, including writing, history, math, and anything else that comes up. Um, yeah, com computer science for the win. This is a way to get past what C.P. Snow called the two cultures science and the humanities. Now he thought that this was a dangerous and false division and I do too. And what's more, Seymour Papert agrees with us. So, so you know we're right. Uh, Seymour Papert, by the way, for those of you who don't know him, was a true badass. He's the, the creator of Logo. Um, he was Piaget's grad student. He was Mitch Resnick's doctoral advisor. I don't know if that gives him more credit than the others. Um, but basically, I'd like to stand on the shoulders of badasses here and quote you his book. Many children are held back in their learning because they have a model of learning in which you've either got it or got it wrong. But when you learn to program a computer, you almost never get it right the first time. Learning to be a master programmer is learning to become highly skilled at isolating and correcting bugs. So what does that mean? That's the same thing that you're doing when you're writing an essay. That's the scientific method. It's what you do when you pivot your business model for your startup. You make something, you test it and see what's wrong with it, and then you fix it. And so that iterative process is what I'd like to talk about in terms of three projects here today. First one, translating Shakespeare. This is an assignment that a lot of English teachers do. You translate Shakespeare into the vernacular, whether it's the modern English or, uh, or some sub-dialect thereof. I think it's a great assignment. I was looking for an excuse to do this in my class. So there it is. Um, I, I want to have my students take their translations and put them into an environment where, where they can uh, have characters actually deliver the dialogue. Now, this is not very heavy on the computer science yet. It's kind of just a digital puppet show. But guess what else plays have besides dialogue? They have stage directions. So enter DR, XTUL. I'm sure theater geeks that are in the crowd know what that means. Computer scientists are looking at that and they're like, oh, structured data. So this project now becomes an entry point to uh, lexical analysis, to parsing, to metaprogramming even potentially. Um, and the students, they don't necessarily need to know about those things before they start. The teacher doesn't even need to know about those things because all we're really doing is trying to get actors to follow stage directions. Now, isn't a play more than just a list of instructions of where to go and what to say? That is exactly the question that I want my students to ask. But I don't want them to ask it because I told them that that was a good question. I want them to ask it because they had an experience that led them to it. Okay, next project, another experience. This one is drawing regular polygons. If you want to draw a polygon, let's pick one that's easy, like, uh, like a square. How, how do you draw a square? You move forward a certain amount, you turn 90 degrees, you move forward the same amount, you turn 90 degrees again. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Elementary school kids can tell you that and they can figure it out. So for high school kids, I generalize it. I want you to draw an n-sided regular polygon where n is, uh, you know, n is four for a square. Um, and so every time I give this assignment, students jump to this equation. It's a formula. They've seen it before in geometry class. It has to do with the angles of a polygon. So this must be the thing, 180 times n minus two. It has to do with angles and polygons. Punch it in and, you know, they always want to do this, but when you punch it in, it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because that's a formula for the sum of the interior angles of a regular polygon, and when you're describing motion on a path that's outlining a shape, you're looking at the exterior angles. A square is just a special case where both of those are 90, and so you get tricked. I want students to be able to explore and find this formula for themselves so that angles of a polygon are not just formulas that you memorize, but they're things that you can experience and play with. Geometry software is awesome. Why not have students make the geometry software themselves? Okay, next project, teaching history. Um, in 10th grade, students are supposed to study the age of adventure, or um, the age of exploration, as you might, uh, you might also call it. This is the time when colonialism happened, and Columbus, and all of this stuff. So it sounds very adventurous. I want them to know about, uh, about the three Gs, seeking God, gold, and glory. This is also an adventure. Um, th this was a game that people actually paid money for. These days, an elementary school kid can make it. You probably played it. I did. Um, you were a square. And you move around on the screen and you pick things up. I had my students figure out what do they want to move around on the screen and pick up? What kinds of things need to be unlocked? What are the keys that it takes to unlock them? And they could create this game from the perspective of either the explorers or from the perspective of the native people who were having explorers arrive. So I guess all I'm trying to say here is that you can teach any subject with any other subject, but this is the real promise of computers and computer science. Not to have us repeatedly give children exercises using the computer, but the, for the computer to become a 
tool by which they can program and learn more about the world. So if you'd like to let me steal your project ideas, uh, hit me up and I'll teach them in my class. <laughs>